Hello, everyone. This is Mr. Deshaun of the Parenting Network, and we are going to continue our sessions of making proud choices. So I'm happy to be with you, and today's lesson is going to be on STDs, also sexually transmitted diseases, also known as STIs, sexually transmitted infections. So you'll hear those words used interchangeably. So if you hear me speak of STD or STI, I'm speaking of the same subject matter in this case. So to get us started, if you haven't already done so, we're going to watch the video that goes with this lesson. And this video is going to talk about STDs in a very general sense and how you can protect yourself from them. And when we come back, we're going to take some time and go through the STDs that were discussed in more detail, a little more specific to each STD. And we'll also introduce you to one STD that's not included in the video that falls into a third category um, that we'll uh, talk about. So the two categories you'll hear in the video are STDs that are known as bacteria or viruses. Bacterial STDs or viral STDs are the primary ones that will be discussed in your video and then we'll go from there. So sit back, watch the video, pay attention and we'll come back together. If you've already seen the video, you can go ahead and move forward in this video here. So now we've watched our video and it has given us uh, some great general information about STDs and how to prevent STDs. We're gonna take some time now and we're gonna go through some specifics when it comes to sexually transmitted diseases and infections. And so what we wanna do, we're gonna, I'm gonna once again share my screen with you and we're gonna go through a PowerPoint that's going to walk us through and so I may be on screen or I may be off screen from time to time, but just know I'm here and I'm gonna be talking to you. So what we wanna do is first is to focus on STDs, STIs, and what can happen with STDs, STIs to your body. And what we're gonna talk about is who gets infected and that's both male and female. And when we talk about male and female and harm done to the body, we're gonna mostly be referring to, most specifically be referring to the reproductive anatomy of an individual that is born male, born female. Now this is not about identity or um, any of the other components of our sexuality. We're gonna talk about the anatomy, the reproductive anatomy, and how that can be impacted um, as well as our physical well-being. So we're gonna start off with chlamydia and chlamydia falls into the category of bacteria. If you remember from the video, a bacteria can be cured with medication if it is caught um, at a early period of time. It's more likely that it can be treated and cured. Uh, so bacteria, again, is curable. A virus is non-curable, but a virus is also treatable. So we wanna keep that in mind as we have this discussion and go through this. So with chlamydia, it's a bacteria that can put you at risk of getting other STDs. So it does allow you to be open for other infections to enter into your body. And that's really with all STDs. Once you allow that STD, that STD enters your body, it makes you more susceptible or more open because your immune system is busy handling that infection that other infections can enter your body. So it is possible to have more than one STD at a time uh, in different parts of your body or in the same parts of your body. So you could have chlamydia, you can have gonorrhea, you can have chlamydia and herpes, or you can have multiple STDs. Uh, so we wanna be mindful of that and just make sure that we're aware of that as we explore our sexual beings, our sexual life. So chlamydia can also cause what is known as pelvic inflammatory disease. And this is where the pelvic region can become swollen and inflamed and it can cause a lot of irritation and discomfort uh, because of that infection in your body. It can also cause infertility, meaning the inability to have children going forward. Uh, it can cause damage to the uterus or um, also to other parts of the body that can complicate things. Uh, fallopian tube as well can become inflamed and it can create issues going forward with pregnancy. It can also cause what is known as ectopic pregnancy. An ectopic pregnancy is when the egg is not able to make its way to the uterus to implant there and it may begin to grow and develop in the fallopian tube 
which could become very dangerous for mother. Um, and in most cases, it has to be medically taken care of by a doctor. Um, and that pregnancy usually does not go uh, to full term. And then it can also cause chronic pelvic pain. So also very much in line with the pelvic inflammatory disease, it can cause pain within that pelvic region. And primarily you see that that is physically impacting um, both men and women, um, but women when it comes to the pelvic area, the uterus uh, and the fallopian tube. Uh, and it also can cause issues with male infertility um, if it is left untreated for an extended period of time. Uh, also, a baby can be impacted if a woman um, has chlamydia while pregnant. It can be passed from mother to child. So we want to be very, very mindful and aware of that uh, when we are talking about these STDs and how they can cause problems for our life and our future going forward. Gonorrhea, another STD uh, that we want to be very mindful of, it is a bacteria also can be passed from mother to child. The risk of getting other STDs exists, pelvic inflammatory disease, infertility, ectopic pregnancy are some of the major factors with this. With chlamydia and gonorrhea, you might also find that you have what is known as a discharge, um, which is a fluid that comes from the penis or the vagina. Uh, and it, it could be also found in the urethra. And we want to be mindful that for males, there should not be any type of discharge uh, that comes out of your penis. The only thing that should come out of your penis should be semen or as well as urine. So if there's any other type of fluid that's yellowish or greenish or of any kind that's not of your normal, you need to see a doctor and see what that might be. It may not be an STD, but it is most likely an infection of some sort. Um, again, it may have an odor to it, um, but it typically is yellow or greenish, and that's a sign of infection in the body. So you can also think about the idea that if you have a cold or a flu, you might have mucus, and sometimes that mucus may have a yellow or a green color to it. That is definitely a sign that there's some type of infection in your body and in that area of your body. So that's what some, we really want to pay attention to for women. We want to also be mindful and understand that there is a natural discharge that you have um, as your vagina naturally develops. Uh, and that's normal. You're, you have a normal discharge. Um, typically, that discharge may be clearer to maybe a whitish color. And you may find that, that you may have a more intense discharge of that nature, maybe closer toward the time of your period. That's normal. If for any reason that your normal changes and you might find a discharge that is a yellowish or greenish color, you wanna to talk to a doctor and see what might be going on. It doesn't mean you have an STD, but it does mean that there is an infection in that area of your body. And we wanna make sure that we're taking care of ourselves and living our, as our best selves. And so if there's any time there's an infection there, we wanna make sure we're getting that established and talking to a physician. Uh, also, if there's a odor change, that, that's not your normal. We wanna make sure that we're talking to a doctor or a physician and finding out what might be going on with our bodies. So just being mindful of that and aware that we do have natural things that are happening with our body, but there are some things that if they're different or change, we wanna pay attention to. So then we have syphilis. Syphilis also falls into the category of bacteria. Uh, again, it is curable with medication and what we want to do and make sure when we talk about medication is that we're taking our medication all the way to completion. There are times I know when we've been given medicine and we've taken it a few days and we start to feel better and we don't take it anymore. But when, when it comes to STDs, we want to be very mindful to take the medication as prescribed until it's all gone. That way we can make sure that that infection is very, very likely out of our body. Because sometimes when we stop taking the medication, we're allowing that infection to, to continue to be there and over time it may show symptoms again or it may not. Also, we want to make sure that we pinpoint that not every STD shows symptoms. Right? It is very common for people to have STDs and not have any symptoms. We want to be really clear on that because there are times when we will we, we'll say, okay, I feel fine, I feel healthy, there's no way I have anything, 
but it's very possible you may have an STD and not know it. There is a very high ratio of people who do not have symptoms. They're known as asymptomatic. And so an asymptomatic individual will not pass, will not have symptoms, but they can pass the infection or virus onto someone else, the bacteria or virus. So we wanna be really, really clear on that and mindful of that. So with syphilis, there is again, the risk of getting other STDs, brain damage, blindness, paralysis, and death. So what we wanna do is talk about this a little bit. Uh, for syphilis, syphilis actually has what has been defined as four categories or four stages. Uh, syphilis, when you first uh, may contract it, within about three to six weeks, you might find that you have a painless sore, um, also known as a canker, um, that can appear at the location or in the area where you may have first contacted or contracted the bacteria, right? So where syphilis might first have entered the body, there may be a painless sore. It may not even itch, um, but you may notice it. And a lot of times the dangers of syphilis is because those sores are painless and they don't itch, is that people ignore them and they don't think that there's anything going on. It's just a weird abnormality that happens on the body sometimes and they're like, okay, it happened. And it will go away. The next thing you have to understand is that it will go away, but the, the bacteria is still in your body. And that bacteria is still in your body, it's still doing damage. And what might happen um, a few weeks later, months later, perhaps even, you might find that you have a reddish rash that might form on the palm of the hand or the, the soles of the feet. Uh, and a lot of times what happens is people will see a rash and they might think they rubbed up against something or touched something weird. And they don't go to a doctor to find out what that rash is all about. And in that second stage, the, the bacteria is still transmittable. You can still pass it to another person, but that rash will eventually go away. And we wanna, again, be really understanding that that bacteria is still in the body. The third stage is known as a latent stage. That latent stage, there's not any other visible outward symptoms you might see. And this stage can last anywhere from a year to about 10 years, if not more for some people. And so there's the virus is there, it's still causing damage. And then you might get to that fourth stage. If you've not been treated, you've not been given medicine to remove the bacteria from your body, that last stage is where it begins to possibly do severe bodily damage, motor damage to parts of the brain, where you get to that point of brain damage, paralysis, hearing issues might develop, spinal issues might develop because that bacteria has continually been doing damage. And once it gets to that point, any damage done is not reversible, right? So that's something that you have to really be careful and mindful of. So syphilis is a very dangerous one because it can be very sneaky. And it seems like you might just have a painless sore, you might just have a couple rashes, and that's it, but it actually is still in your system. So paying attention and being mindful of that will be very beneficial as we move forward. And these are affecting both male and female. Uh, and we wanna be mindful of that through our understanding of what bacteria such as syphilis can do. Now this next one doesn't fall into the category of bacteria or virus. Um, I told you we'll be looking at a third category and that category is known as a parasite. So this is trichomoniasis. Trichomoniasis comes from a parasite that actually enters into the body through the vagina, the urethra, um, and it actually is just feeding on the body and, and, and it's living there and it's causing damage. And some of the damage can be seen in the symptoms of a ir irritating discharge. Again, a fluid that is released from the penis or the vagina that is not natural to you. Uncontrolled itching. So in that infected area, you may have a lot of itching um, that's going on and it's you, you tried other things and maybe stop it from itching, but it's still itching. So this affects both men and males and females. And we wanna be really, again, mindful that not everyone has symptoms. So you might be feeling just fine, but you still might have trichomoniasis in your body. 
paying attention to our bodies, being mindful that things can be going on even if we don't feel them happening is really going to help us as we continue to learn and, and be our best selves. This next one, we're now starting our virus category. So the next ones you're going to see are viruses. And what you will see here with herpes is again, there's a risk of getting other STDs. There may be painful bleeding um, or blistering from the sores that develop from herpes. Genital sores that we're, I was just speaking of. And again, typically the painful bleeding you may see more when females, um, but sores um, can be both male and female and normally they're at the point of contact. So they're normally where you first were infected and with genital herpes, uh, what you will find is that over time, those outbreaks may begin to decrease, but you still have that virus because that virus is not curable, it's treatable. So when you have outbreaks, you might be able to take medication that will reduce the outbreak. And you can also take medication that might stop the outbreaks from happening altogether. But the virus is still in your body and it's still a possibility of you passing that on to someone else. So we wanna be really, really mindful of that and aware, once again, even if we are feeling fine, if we have this virus, we can pass this virus from ourselves on to, to someone else. And we wanna just be aware of that and be honest with our partners, if we've been sexually active, what that might mean for their well being. And with herpes, we do know, again, that there are actually two forms of herpes. There's herpes simplex one, which is a common cold sore. It is, it is what it is that people have cold sores. It doesn't mean you had any sexual contact. It's a virus that, that lives in our world. And sometimes people have a cold sore from when they were really, really little. And I know often you don't wanna admit this, but as kids, as children, we would sometimes run around and somebody would have a drink, they would leave it, we would pick it up and put it to our mouth, and we might have transmitted a cold sore, the virus that causes cold sores to us. It happens. Also, we won't admit, but as little kids, a lot of times what we would do when we would go to a water fountain, in my case, in the state of Wisconsin, I live is known as the bubbler, you would maybe put your whole mouth on it. And you don't know if a few kids before you or the kid before you might have had a cold sore and did the same thing. Now it's transmitted to you. And often with even the cold sore, we discovered that over time, you may have less and less outbreaks of your cold sore. Can a cold sore be transmitted to the genital area? Yes. Can a genital form of herpes, herpes simplex 2, be transferred from the genitals to the mouth? Yes. So we want to just be really mindful that if someone has a cold sore, that we're not talking about um, or not allowing them to perform oral sex on us because it can transmit from their mouth to the genitals. And it wouldn't be genital herpes that we have, but it would be herpes now on our genitals. Sounds weird, right? So let's not even complicate matters. Just be mindful, be careful, and make sure that we're not risking um, our infecting someone else. So this next one is hepatitis B. Hepatitis B affects the bloodstream. It is a virus. You are at risk of getting other STDs. It may cause damage to the liver. Hepatitis is definitely, hepatitis B especially, is definitely known for causing liver damage, decreased liver function. And this is both something that can happen with both male and females. And so being mindful of that, and it can be passed through sexual behavior and activity as well as drug use. And so we wanna make sure that we're paying attention to the fact that these STDs can be passed, not just through sex, but through use drug needles and other needles. So what we wanna be mindful of is not using needles that have been used by other people and being aware of that. And that can even be when you're getting tattoos or you're getting piercings. You wanna be very careful that the person that's doing your tattoos or piercings are professional and that they're using new needles every time. That is key to making sure that we are at our best health and best selves. 
So if a person is not willing to show you a new needle being used, coming fresh out the packet, if you don't feel like you're in a hygienic space, a very clean space, you should be very careful and maybe rethink getting that tattoo or piercing um, because that can put you at risk. So we wanna really be, um, again, thoughtful, mindful, and aware of how do we present our best selves as we move forward. The next one is HPV. HPV is human papilloma virus. It is a virus. Um, you're at risk of getting other STDs if you do get this virus. Uh, this virus does have um, a shot that has been formed to help reduce the risk of transmission. It's something that you would want to talk to your parents and your doctors about. And just be mindful that, that again, there are different strands of this virus. Just like when you talk about the flu and other viruses, there are different forms of it. And so just because you may be immunized or feel you're immunized against one strand doesn't mean that you couldn't possibly get another. Uh, there's also cervical cancer that can be caused by the damage of this virus. Genital warts can form on the, um, around the penis or um, in the, the vagina or vaginal area. And again, being very aware that this can also be in the body with no symptoms. So again, talking to your partner, talking to your physician, and making sure that you're doing your best to keep yourself protected and to keep your partners protected. Uh, again, some of these STDs can be transmitted through skin-to-skin -skin contact. So trichomoniasis, herpes, you do not have to have penetration for them to enter into your body. And we want to be really, really aware of that. Uh, so, so we won't think that that's the only way you can get an STD is if there's some type of penetration that happens. No, it can be through just the contact of a person and as well as oral sex. We want to make sure we're aware that oral sex can cause the passing of STDs. And oral sex, again, so we are on the same page, is mouth to genital, giving or receiving a person's mouth to your penis, to vagina, make sure that we are aware that that can transmit STDs. And then we're gonna talk about HIV, um, which can become AIDS. HIV can become AIDS. And we'll talk um, about this as a virus that also allows you to possibly be at risk of getting other STDs. Long-term, it can cause brain damage, paralysis, death. Uh, it can also, cause uh, sores to form on the body. It is treatable. We're gonna talk about HIV um, and realize that a person with HIV can live a very long and very healthy life. And it is not a death sentence as people want to project sometimes. It's definitely not. And we want them being really, really mindful that the best thing to do is to be tested for all STDs. And if someone finds out they have HIV, what they can do is begin medications and that medication can help keep their immune system at a point where it will remain healthy enough that they will not develop illness and sickness that will become diagnosed as AIDS. And we're gonna talk about more specifics of it and how it may impact a person's well-being and body. And so I will see you all in a bit.